Yes, finally, there you are. <laughs> Hi. I'm Hi, sorry, I'm just going to... Hi, Mehek. It's lovely to have you. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Well, uh, I don't know how. Uh, I don't even know how I'm looking because I got ready so quickly because um, I kind of had a lot of uh, interviews. So it's just kind of a crazy month. Uh, yeah, true, true. It's a crazy month. It's the Pride Month and. Uh, we're all in here to make the most of it and uh, I want to... Am I audible and visible? Yes, you are audible and visible and uh, viewers, if you could just tell us uh, if you are able to hear us properly and everything. If there's a glitch, please let us know. Uh, just give me one minute. Glitch. I'm just going to turn the fan a little low because I can't hear you. Yeah, sure. So those who are watching us, before we start, uh, I'll just say that Queer Academia is inviting your papers, you're inviting your artwork. So please go to the link in our bio and submit it there. And uh, so uh, let's welcome Mehek Agarwal here. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. Thank you very much for tuning in and sorry for the delay. It was from my end because I was kind of juggling you know i finished <laughs> wrapped up an interview and i kind of changed and i came back right i can so. imagine i mean you have a huge following on instagram and I, and i was going through your profile i feel like you inspire a lot of people so why don't you begin by telling us about your journey on instagram and uh, what your following means to you your work etc Wow, you're asking me like to kind of nutshell my life in just a few words. Yeah. But to start off with, heavy, uh, hi everyone. Thank you very much for also very tuning in and uh, being patient with me. And thank you for all the love and support. And happy Pride Month to everybody. Though we don't need a month to celebrate ourselves, we can celebrate ourselves every day. But yes, uh, we are celebrating with ourselves wholeheartedly. And uh, so for me, I'm, my name is Mehek Agarwal for a lot of people who know and people who don't know me. And I'm a proud transgender woman. My pronouns are she and her. Uh, you want to know about my Instagram journey? So I'm not a very social media person. I kind of, I'm a very non-technical person. So I really don't know how does social media kind of operate. But last year when the lockdown hit, uh, I kind of had a lot of work, a lot of time to myself and I was figuring out what to do and my friends have been telling me for the longest time that you know Mehek you should start talking about yourself your journey because you can be inspiring to a lot of people I had no idea as to how I can inspire anyone but okay I said let me start and it's kind of um, it just came very organically I started I did not know I did not know the whole Instagram how does it work so I used to just but when I started, I kind of started putting random pictures. But then I realized that, you know, I kind of want to talk about my journey authentically. So I deleted all the old posts. I just mm -hmm. kept my mom, mom picture, I think the first picture and, and one of my cat, uh, Kancha, who's not mm -hmm. anymore. But then I wanted to show the journey uh, uh, right from uh, an age of four or five to how I am today because... Uh, when I started my journey, I wanted to look up to somebody uh, as a mentor who can not probably also physically or vocally, but at least somebody to look up to who can, who can, who I could relate to uh, in every stage of life. Um, so I wanted to keep my journey and tell people about how I felt when I was a child, how I felt when I was growing up, how I felt when I was kind of discovering myself. So I wanted to be very authentic with the journey. I think I kind of related with uh, people. And suddenly I kind of, um, uh, it became viral. People started loving what I was doing. Uh, and from zero to uh, uh, 30, 35K, it was generally about uh, gender awareness. Uh, though I used to uh, take a lot of pictures. But then uh, fashion is one thing which has been very close to me. I think from very early age, it gives me joy. It gives me um, it gives me peace. So I kind of thought, let me just digress a little and mm -hmm. follow and include passion of passion to passion along with my uh, gender awareness. So I 
pot forge passion into it though there are so many uh, influencers in social media so i was not sure how it's going to go but mm-hmm. i said it's no harm in trying so i got fashion into my niche and i kind of now i'm digressing into fashion plus i do a lot of awareness and gender uh, posit- uh, gender awareness and body positivity yeah. so yeah it's been a fun ride uh, there have been a lot of people who have been supporting me i made mm-hmm. some beautiful friends uh, across globe so yeah it's been great and um uh, i'm i'm just liking the whole vibe and i feel that my journey has just started and there's lot more to come from my head yeah definitely you know uh, when i go to your page what comes through is a lot of self acceptance and and positivity so i wanted to know about what your so you have made instagram your own you've made the platform your own i want to understand what uh, instagram has offered you or what the community feels like for you what have you been well received and can you talk a lot more about uh, the online lgbt community would what, what is better is it better offline the support or or online what what do you prefer uh honestly speaking if you ask me i'm not judging anyone but i kind of uh i think i got online support more than i've actually received offline because when you are offline because i'm based out of pune and i kind of used to go to lgbt events but i uh and i still have not been able to figure out but whenever you see a participation of uh people in the from the lgbt community in any of the lgbt events the ratio of uh, trans women to uh, gay men uh, is like very less very very less so i never came across anybody who i could talk to or could relate to or you know who could uh, you know who i could take inspiration from or ask questions which i had from years so uh with social media i kind of uh, became uh, easy for me to connect with a lot of girls who i looked up to uh for a while uh, uh and they kind of responded uh, very positively so i'm so happy that you know i know them personally i can call them my friends which is a great thing now because they're so supportive so i think uh, online um uh, the kind of i uh, inclusive uh, witty which i got uh, i don't think i received offline i i guess another could reason could also be because of the covid because everybody was home and we were all connecting through instagram uh, or social media so i think everybody was there so maybe it was easy for me to connect and i built strong relationship and i would uh, i just believe in uh, working towards it and maintaining that relationship for as long as i want to so yeah it's been a great it's been lovely that's amazing and do you do you want to tell us something about your journey you in one of your post you have really explicitly talked about uh, hormone therapy and your body changing body and your transition so could you tell us what that has been like for you because uh, uh, i feel like who you are today has must have not come easy i mean you there, there must have been a lot of inner work that you've done so what has it been personally for you the journey oh uh. so it's been a it's been a roller coaster but i guess i um uh you know we all have negativity and positivity and good and bad in your life but uh, i think um whenever a bad whenever something happened from it something wrong happened to you or something which uh, come out to you unexpected you all, there is always a positive in that as well as to how you take it and and what you learn from it and and move forward in your life i don't believe in hanging to my past though i uh, i completely appreciate and um, i uh, lo- i think if it wouldn't have been my past my present wouldn't have existed so i um, though i don't talk a lot about it but i ap- appreciate the journey i've had it's been quite a journey for me i come from a very typical orthodox marwari family where you know uh, we were a joint family um and and being marwari first and being in calcutta and being in an orthodox family it was like uh uh it was like so many people around you and uh, and we come from family of values where you know hum log ke ghar mein generally society kya bolegi log kya bolenge usko zyada importance di jati hai not that you know what ideally you as an individual want or what do you seek uh, as a child 
So I have three siblings. Uh, so including me, we are four, and I have two sisters. I think from an early age, I started questioning my mom as to why are you putting me on those, you know, pants and that uh, shirt. I want to wear that frilly frock. So my mom said, no, boys wear that, girls wear this. So I think that's my early recollection. कि अच्छा दो gender होते हैं एक लड़कियाँ होती हैं एक लड़के होते हैं और and then um, so that's my first early time of questioning. and um and i used to be more uh, even when i was to go to school i used to always kind of hang out more with girls and less with boys uh, so they kind of used to tease me ki you always hang out with girls lekin kya hota hai jab bacche hote hai to itna log us cheez pe concentrate nahi karte because you're a kid so <coughs> you kind of in a space where you know you're very ch- you very cute and you know everybody take it like a fun and nobody really questions you but you know when i started growing up and i still wanted to be uh, you know with the girls and kind of not play the sports where guys which guys used to play in terms of playing cricket or in terms of playing football i used to like playing uh, ba- badminton or i used to like playing ludo or i used to like playing carrom or you know play with babi and all that so mere ghar mein mujhe bahut log tease karte the aur aur mera jo you know the anxiety and the questions i think became more um more of an issue for me when i kind of hit puberty and my body was not mm-hmm. changing as well as what contrary to my sisters were so mm-hmm. i'm like what's wrong i think there's something not right with my body mm-hmm. uh, and my voice was getting husky i'm said oh god what is happening to me and i couldn't talk to anybody about it so i was just uh, kind of you know questioning myself as to why is that happening and i was always a very feminine person you know i used to like always sit cross legs like this i would mm-hmm. never sit like a man you know with that mm-hmm. legs is like he bent there i used to always sit my hand like this i used to always talk in in a particular way my hands used to move in a certain way i used to walk in a certain way and i used to get bullied quite a lot in school by my nev my by my cousins in the house I was, I was continuously told that why I do things differently. So I'm like, is something wrong with me? I'm like, is is it something normal? Um, so I, to me, was never. I was never different to me. I think the world actually started telling me that I was different. For me, I was very normal. I was just a normal, happy child. But I think that happiness uh, in no time turned out to be a sad child, a depressed child, questioning herself or himself. and um i think to an extent where i uh came to a position in my life and i think i was 17 or 18 where i i really started feeling that there is something majorly wrong with me and i wanted to be this person which society wanted me to do to be so i went started going to the gym i started working out becoming like you know more uh, like a man which people wanted to see of me i used to con- be very conscious of how i behaved and uh, which are i think triggering more anxiety and depression so fast forward i um, i kind of uh, was spotted by a a photographer in a nightclub in calcutta that's where i my origin from and he asked me like would you like to uh, you know shoot with me and kind of um, you know and see how does it go i said wow that's nice because fashion is something which has always been so um, kind of um, there in me in the back of the mind so i think kind of grabbed the opportunity and um i went i did my first post for portfolio and that was my enter in the fashion industry and that was the first time i kind of figured out the term gay um so i kind of knew that ki male female ke alawa there somebody there is another gender called gay where you know if you don't like uh, being a man if you don't like the opposite gender then you're gay so i'm like okay so i'm gay now Mm-hmm. so i was kind of happy that you know i'm finally gay and all but you know i think in the fashion space also if you talk about 8 years or 9 years back when i was modeling being a femme child and uh, being a femme boy and being very feminine behavior was kind of a taboo you can't be a male model and you can't be feminine you have to be like ultra masculine mm-hmm. ultra, you have to be like you know chiseled body you used to walk in a certain way so i kind of bully there as well and fast forward i think when i start when i uh, turned 22 or 23 uh, uh, or 24 the pressure started building up from family of getting married taking the family business i'm like 
this is going somewhere where i don't want to go this is not happening and uh, and the pressure was a lot because any family uh, function i used to go to they 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 were just they used to just wait ki when this person is going to come and they used to literally corner me all the elders and what's happening in your life so when are you getting married meri behan ji ki shaadi ho gayi thi wo log mujhe bolte the ki aap kab sone ki chain pehna rahe hain hame ya on all that and i was like really uh, i so i kind of stop uh, start start stop going to family functions and all and uh, so one day i decided that you know i think i really need questions to these answers and i told my parents that i'm going to go to bombay i'm going to pursue my modeling career and my parents were completely against it but i was a stubborn person i said i need to go i have to go and i want to go so they kind of gave up with the idea okay go but i didn't go to bombay i come came to pune because i had a friend here and uh, so through him i I started going to LGBT events, and I saw so many people, and I was so happy. Ki arey Bhagwan, maya keli ni hu. There, there are like so many people like me, and uh, so. But when I entered the, uh, when I had exposure to the LGBT, uh, you know, spectrum, I was uh, rejected there as well by the gay people because gay men are men who like another man. They don't like a a woman or somebody who's very femme. So I was mm-hmm. kind of. Uh, Say that you are not fit to be gay, or you are not accepted here, or you, you know, it was difficult to even get intimate with somebody because nobody would like me because I was so feminine. So I'm like, oh God, now what is happening? I am not gay, also. So what am I now? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Uh, then I started kind of uh, cross dressing and discovering my feminine side, and life became a little more easier. i became more likable by people but more by heterosexual uh, people than by the lgbt people so they used to like more uh, more uh, me more because the way i dressed the way i dance the way i kind of was such a flamboyant person in uh, in in parties and all um so life moved on and uh, in 2017 i kind of had a very um, mental breakdown where i uh, my body started giving up i kind of stopped eating i started losing weight uh, i used to get headache i was not sleeping and i move i i kind of uh, started seeing doctors and it was a series of 6 months of uh, complete diagnosis from the body where uh, I, they were just not able to find anything what was going wrong my body was deteriorating and i thought that i would really pass and i became very mm. suicidal mm. so they kind of recommended me to a psychiatrist which was in mm. uh, 2017 end mm. after 3 months of psychiatric evaluation my psychiatrist finally told me that uh, you suffer from gender dysphoria and that you there is a they, that there is a word called transgender and you phys- and you medically can transition to the gender you Uh, you relate with which is like because you, your mind and your uh, soul relates with and i think that was the first time in uh, 32 years where i could finally answer all the questions i had all the years of whatever going on and i was so happy that you know i could uh, i was a person who uh, who had could get i was a person who could get answer to all my questions so that was my journey to knowing that i was a trans person but the after journey uh, begins after that which yeah. is struggle of coming out to parents uh, coming out to office telling your friends and a uh, lot to speak <laughs> yeah yeah so two two main things i'm very intrigued by what you said one was being received more by the heterosexual people as as compared to the lgbt community and i personally have seen that uh, sometimes you know there are these uh, different pages that come up they sort of um, still marginalize queer women why is that why why do you think women uh, are not finding space in the space that is meant for us for the lgbt community Oh, that's is a very. Is it something uh, else? Because why is it that women? That's a very good question. Which uh, so to answer to your first question about uh, accepted by heterosexual community was because 
because I was so flamboyant and because my kind of body, I used to kind of, you know, started showing my skin quite a lot. You know, I used to like wear those ultra tight denim low waist jeans and I used to wear t-shirts which used to be like quite deep uh, v-neck and I used to kind of had long curly hair and I used to put kajal and all and, and I kind of started getting a lot of attention by heterosexual men. They kind of used to like, you know, when I used to go to party, they used to literally come and kind of, you know, um, you know, talk about it, flirt with me. Um, they would ask me if I would buy, they would buy me, a, if they can buy me a drink, if they can take me for a drive or they can meet. And I kind of liked the attention which I never got for all these years by, uh, you know, a man, you know, it feels very nice when you are at that age where you need some attention by men somewhere and your body also wants to get intimate with somebody and I had I, the intimacy I had for all these years was forced in, in terms of uh, sexual assault it was not uh, something which was by choice it was like in 25-26 uh, years I was finally getting the attention which I always wanted from uh, heterosexual men and not from the gay men so that was the that was kind of a phase which I really enjoyed, you know, mm-hmm. um, and so th- uh, that that's the reason I'm talking about um, space which is for us and uh, why there is not a good uh, representation of, you know, when you talk about lesbian women, women or trans women in uh, in the LGBT space, especially um, on a on a physical space, like if I talk about a virtual space, I think now if you, if you see the virtual space, there is a lot. Mm. Uh, there are a lot of girls who have, who have come out and were very open talking about their journey. So I'm not sure uh, if I talk about a year and a half back before the pandemic hit, uh, any LGBT events I personally went to, I felt a lot out of space because there was hardly anybody I could talk to or could relate to. And I could never understand why it was that maybe uh, I think, you know, I would say that only in the last two years uh, in India, uh, the voice of trans women have kind of become very strong, mm. um, which was not there earlier, um, though I'm sure there were a lot of people earlier, but they were not a people who were like um, uh, coming out and to- talking about it, I think. I would give a big shout out here to Reena Rai, who is the founder member of Miss Trans Queen India. I think she took a risk and I think she believed in something which I think nobody believed for all these years. And when she started this pageant and the girls who were winning those uh, pageants, I think kind of were exposed to uh, the media so much that there was by uh, default a representation started coming up so much. So mm-hmm. when Natasha won, and then Navya came out, and then Amu came out, and then all when these girls started coming out, and when we started, uh, it was so well represented in the media as well. Prior to which, it was more of a mockery. It was more of like a a wrong dialect, even in a in a in a movie business or in an entertainment space. Mm-hmm. I think when the strong women started coming out, and people started looking at them, I yeah. think the whole uh, media, even the um, I would say um, the news or the uh, social media was covering it, started covering them and uh, representing them in a nice way. Uh, So uh, I do not actually go a lot uh, to these LGBT events uh, at the moment. Um, Of course, for the last year and a half, there haven't been any. So I personally hope that in the last year and a half, because there are so many girls who actually have physically come out and talking about it so openly yeah. and if there is an event which happens in the future maybe I, we will see a better representation True. True. but in I, the past i would still not know why they were not maybe because they were not a people who were out yeah. or maybe for the city i stay in they were not a girl still i know who are trans women and out but i think maybe the story must have been different in Bombay or Bangalore, but I've not been to any events in Bombay and Bangalore, so I really don't know what was the story like. But I do hope that, you know, when things go back to normal, hopefully, and when we go to events like that, we see a better representation, a better ratio of 
uh, queer women and trans women and non-binary yes. trans folks uh, in an LGBT space. Yes. Yeah, I feel like uh, you know, uh, women as it is have had to come so far. In general, it's been tougher for women to find visibility, to find access, and then to take queer women. It's 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 one step further. So I I feel like as women there has been so many limitations to fight and and like you said coming out is very important not just for the LGBT community but also for women everywhere because I feel like um, I can't open my Instagram account and leave it open for anybody to come and you know say whatever they want to say I don't feel safe in an online space so I cannot imagine anybody marginalized to feel comfortable so what what tips would you have to have for someone who's just coming out or who's just still finding themselves and how how can they leverage social media to find the support that they deserve I would say you know social media I think is a much easier way and a much easy access to um um, I think a space where you have a lot of people, so you have uh, you have a lot of people out there, and even if you kind of go ahead and do a search on, like for hashtags also like transgender or trans India, you will see all the girls, most of the girls there. So I kind of, if I go ahead and look for a hashtag, you know, at least for example, I get a lot of DMs from people who are, you know, are thinking of transitioning or are cross dressing or who kind of see that I'm an inspiration. So I get a lot of DMs like that. So I think it's it's become a space where uh, I think we are more accessible than in uh, than it was on a physical space. Because if you, if you talk about a physical space, it becomes limited to also where you are residing. So if I am residing in Pune and if I go to a physical space, I will only have access to queer women or trans women who are in Pune, not from other cities in India or from the world. But in a social media, especially Instagram, you can find queer women or trans folks or, uh, or other um, you know, people who are from the transgender umbrella across the board. So it's more accessible. And what I will advise means I'm not a person who you can really take an advice from, but I would rather say that, you know, there is no age that uh, it's set or a boundary that you have to come out at this certain age. You should mm -hmm. take your time and mm -hmm. and and first, it's not about coming out to anybody else. It's first about mm -hmm. you accepting yourself first because you know the most of the time what we struggle as individuals is accepting your own self and un understanding yourself and being comfortable with yourself and telling yourself that you're fine if you feel this way. <laughs> You know, you're fine completely and, you know, put your hand here and say you're good. You know, look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself that you're beautiful. That's what I do every day. And talking about coming out to the world and to your family or to your friends, I would say that, you know, as long as you are in, in a stage of your life where you're still studying or you your financial resources is only limited to your parents, you kind of want to, you know, you know, complete your studies because you would not know what is going to be the reaction of your parents when you actually physically tell them because I really feel that, you know, it's such a shame that, you know, in today's date when we talk about 21st century, we still have parents who kind of disown their child just because the child, or child you know, feels different. Because why... Do we celebrate so much when, you know, uh, a woman conceives and mm -hmm. they like, Hum pere hai, hum ki, you know, kind of, and, and later on, you know, in the time if the same child feels differently, you kind of, your love as a parent just goes away for that child. I kind of find that very selfish of people like that who actually have that heart to do that for your own mm -hmm. child. I have never been able to understand that but I think things are changing my mom I love her if she's watching me right now I kind of my mom I think has been the person for me who who changed my life who who gave me that you know that hand that you know when I told my mom that you know I this is how I feel and my mom told me, what have you been waiting for all these years? So I thought, I told my mom that you go, I thought you're going to disown me. I said, are you mad? Are you mad? 
generally it's the kids who disown their parents parents don't disown their child and i'll disown so as her statement was i will disown the world for you mm-hmm. and that statement kind of you know just, i kind of got some super power from somewhere um kind of a light struck on me and i think that from the timid child to kind of a child who really don't care about what world thinks about you so coming back to the topic i would say that you know as long as you are financially dependent on your parents complete your education get a job get independent get self reliant because darling it is not an it is not a fair which is cheap mm-hmm. transition itself is a cost a yes. cost of medically uh, you are going uh, medically you have expenses you have to kind of change your whole wardrobe you have to take extra care of your skin you have to take extra care of your hair you kind of there is a lot of cost involved with so so there would be money you would need and you will only be able to spend that money once you start working and you kind of save and so i would say that plan it yeah. plan it and don't just take hasty decision um don't feel that okay that woman is so beautiful oh she is a trans and she so pretty and i look like this darling i i never look like this always so if you go on my instagram account before you would uh, you would see what i looked like earlier so you are fine wherever you are uh, and once you take that step to transition don't rush trust mm-hmm. the po- process take each day at a time don't try and put your legs on multiple boats which is you're going to because you're going to crash and i'm not i'm not a person who sugar coat things i'm not going to say it's a very easy journey oh you're going to take a magic pill and tomorrow you're going to turn out to this beautiful diva no it is going to be difficult yeah. it you also have to understand that you might even have to walk this journey alone and nobody would be there with you True. if you have people who support you for what you are which is very good so believe in yourself be strong complete your studies get a job and then take that step doesn't matter if you've done if you have taken that step at the age of 40 or you're taking that age of 20 True. but just do it when you want to do it yeah that's that's a very important message i feel because uh, you know i never paid attention to that but you know you have had a tedious journey a long journey of finding yourself and everything and the maturity comes through when you say that you know take your time it's it's never too late and uh, everybody's life is sort of gives you a mixed bag of circumstances so according to what mm-hmm. works for you you know fi- find your footing and what what you said was very important that find independence financial independence be be by yourself because um, that applies not just to the LG- lgbt community i feel like parents especially in india have a tendency to uh, not like their children if they don't agree with everything they stand for so even if it's a it's a boy who who wants to probably become an artist will be rejected just as much by their parents and not be accepted mm-hmm. so it's it's for all of us to know that sometimes you won't find acceptance with your family and peers but but you have to accept yourself and you have to position yourself in the right way so you can live your life so um along with that i also want to tap into you know you you fleetingly mentioned that your body got tired you you were struggling emotionally and physically and i personally feel like uh, being lost in life made me sick as a person as well in my body so do you, do you think there's a connection between somebody who's who's had a tough life or who's who's not felt like themselves or felt lost and not been where they want to be can cause some kind of illness or physical damage to your body as well like what is i would not say physical between? damage to your body it's I'm sorry to inter- in, in, interrupt you there i would not say physically damage because see i think when you have a mental imbalance i think that automatically kind of um you know reflects on how your body functions because at the end of the day uh, how your body function completely depends upon how your brain and your mental health function and and a lot of people don't even talk about it which i find it very funny you know if something goes wrong with our body we go to a doctor but if we feel that you know we're depressed or we are we have kind of anxious 
हमको लगता है कि हम डॉक्टर के पास जाके बोलोगे तो माई फ्रेंड्स आई वु से फिजिकल मेंटल हेल्थ इज एज इम्पोर्टेंट एज फिजिकल हेल्थ आई वु से येस आई थिंक इफ यू हैव हैड अ डिफिकल्ट चाइल्ड हुड इज काइंड ऑफ एड टू योर मेंटल स्टेट ऑफ बींग बिकॉज यू आर नॉट हैप्पी विथ योर सेल्फ एंड बिकॉज यू आर नॉट हैप्पी विथ योर सेल्फ एंड बिकॉज यू कंटिन्यूसली स्ट्रगलिंग इन इन सीकिंग एक्सेप्टेंस इन हैविंग क्वेश्चन इन नॉट बींग और नॉट हैड द चाइल्ड हुड विच यू वॉन्ट टू हैव or probably not getting maybe the job which you want or maybe want not be able to do what you want to do and somebody forcing you to do something else so it kind of all plays with your mind because you use your mind everywhere yeah. because see we when we when i'm sitting here and when i'm talking to you i'm not using my body i'm using my mind mm. so your mind is constantly working and constantly thinking so out of your entire body i think the amount of function which happens is more in your mind and your brain than in any part of your body and in kinds of all this retrospective when you've not had that kind of uh, you've had it rough or you've not had it the way you want to it does play with your mind to be very honest with you and it does contributes to a lot of how you feel uh, how how you are at how much peace are you at with your mi- uh, mi- mind space yeah, yeah. and that can have an impact on you not feeling well physically mm-hmm. and that what exactly happened with me is like when i was when i think my uh my uh, anxiety and my depression hit the roof i think my mm-hmm. ba- body just start started giving up in terms of mm-hmm. you know not sleeping not eating deteriorating and so i kind of yeah i would say yes it does um add a lot to it so whenever you feel like that i think it's very good to take help yeah. if you are a minor then you really would not know what to do so i would say that you know reach out to your parents or to your friends and if you are an adult well reach out to a psychologist or a psychiatrist or or seek therapy therapy is done wonders for me and it's okay, okay to take therapy true and yeah so you know uh, so what i'm hearing from you is take the journey with the self because overall you know whatever can go south for you but you have to take responsibility for your journey and do it your own way is what i'm hearing from you so before we wrap up because you know today we had to cut it short and we have now i know now is right. coming <laughs> yeah we have another live at 6 so before we close i'll just ask you a question from the comment section uh, there seems to be a fan of yours who's repeatedly asking do you um, agree with the movement that as trans women are women how do you like personally to be referred as uh, you you want to be referred to as just a woman or a trans woman is his question so if if you could answer that please see i would say trans women are women uh, i kind of uh, i kind of <clears throat> not going to remove this prefix from from me because that's my identity and uh, and a lot of people uh, kind of especially in india kind of struggle with the whole idea of trans women are, are women also because india have such a strong mention of the third gender community or the hijra community that in india people generally get confused uh, you know what is the difference between a trans woman and a uh, and the hijra uh, somebody who is from the hijra culture but yes i think we are not less than a women um you um maybe you might not have the right infrastructure of your body yet which you can uh, surgically get and and i kind of believe that no though with huge respect for a, a lot of cis gender mem- women who are some very close friends of mine but i personally feel we kind of are in a lot of time out beat cis gender women as well and they kind of tell me that how do you do it mehak how do you look so pretty mai hai their boyfriends tell me learn from her so i would say that you know let's let's just you know stop this differentiation between cisgender women and trans women why why can't we all as a women can yeah. and and be this one army and and be this um i would say the army to uh, and learn from each other respect each other be kind to each other 
and just i would say you know so whether it's trans women is gender women or anybody we are women at the end of the day yeah. it's about the sisterhood i feel and and we all yeah. support each other and i'll have to wrap up here mehak but uh, really hoping to speak with you again more in detail because i feel like you've you've really had a journey that has given you a lot of wisdom and that's coming through because not just uh you're not just inspiring the lgbt community but you're an inspiration to all of us and everybody because there seems to be this self confidence that's unmatched so uh oh that's so sweet thank you, you and please keep shining that light and uh, see you soon mehak thank you thank you everyone for watching and it was uh, i would i really would like to appreciate and thank you very much for this conversation i would say congratulations to you and to your group who is doing this fantastic job Thank and you. you know out there talking about it and i always say that you know the the change is never going to happen when we're going to just talk about within the umbrella the real change is going to only happen when we're going to talk outside and that's what you know youngsters and the new generation is tapping into so all the best for what are you doing and happy pride month and yes have a good day and a wonderful weekend you to me thank you so much nice people you welcome for everybody who's joining thank you very much bye yeah. all right bye